I know, I know. Oh, she made the bulletin. She knows. <laughs> Impurity. Pastor will speak to us from Proverbs chapter 6. In Ephesians chapter 5, verses 2 through 5, live a life filled with love, following the example of Christ. Let there be no sexual immorality, impurity, or greed among you. Such sins have no place among God's people. Obscene stories, foolish talk, coarse jokes are not for you. You can be sure that no immoral, impure, or greedy person will inherit the kingdom of Christ and of God. It's pretty strong words. Let's bow together, please. Heavenly Father, as we come to you this morning, we want to cast aside the cares of today, concentrate on you, invite you to be our special guest this morning. Be with Pastor as he speaks on this topic of impurity. And Lord, help us all to be hearers, not just hearers only, but doers of this word. So Lord, you are our honored guest. Amen. Amen. Take your hymnals, please. Number 507. 507. Love divine, all love's excelling. Well, 507. <laughs>
reading number 514, back just a few pages now. 514, talking about purity of heart. 514. How great is the love the Father has lavished on us that we should be called children of God. And that is what we are. Dear friends, now we are children of God, and what we look like has not been known. Made known. Let them know that the man will be in their ears to be shed the blood of him, for we shall see him as he is. Everyone has this hope, purifies himself just as he is pure. This is how we know what love is. Jesus Christ laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for our brothers. If anyone has material possessions and sees his brother in need but has no pity on him, how can the love of Christ be in him? Dear children, let us not love with words, but with actions and in truth. This is how we know we belong to the truth, and how we set our hearts at rest in his presence, whenever our hearts feel us. For God is greater than our hearts, and he knows everything. Dear friends, if our hearts do not condemn us, we have confidence before God. time we'll look at some announcements on that third page of the bulletin. Tonight, Summer Praise Concert will have the Foresters. Now the Foresters are from Nashville, Tennessee. They used to be from right out here in Emily City, but they moved to Nashville. They're uh, moving up in the gospel music organization, so to speak. That will be in a different location, not the Church of the Nazarene tonight, but the Church of God at 2100 North M52. So make that note if you're planning on going out there. Now it will be the same group. The Foresters will not only sing out there. Tomorrow night they'll be up in Clyde or up in, off of Belsey Road. So remember that one. That's That will be the same group, probably doing the same concert. But they're here in town, so they're, they book both of them. Tuesday, ladies Bible study, 945. Wednesday, our midweek prayer service will be right here. Uh, next Sunday, August 6th, graduation party for the Russell kids, for Billy and for Thumper and, and whoever there. So let's, uh, let's all uh, take part in that. And Rusty and Debbie need to know if you're planning on coming. Shoot them a text or call. They need to know so that they can have the proper amount of food there. Uh, and then PM service then, after that, uh, the Linger Water, right over here at the Blesses Home. They've, they've opened their home to us, and they feel that's their mission to have us as Linger Water, so we can have some fellowship there. Looking ahead, Tuesday, August 8th, uh, we're going to try prayer with fasting for that in conjunction with Pray for America. And the big news is, is we're also planning a tent revival. September 8th and 9th, circle that on your calendar, put it in your phone, make the reminders. That tent will be set up probably out, right out here somewhere. And uh, we'll have uh, a revival service. We have a speaker, what's his name? Eddie, Eddie Phillips. Eddie Phillips, right over here from Flushing, has been an evangelist all his life. Uh, I, I've never heard him, but I understand he's an excellent evangelist. Uh, mixes humor in with his sermon, but brings it right to the point. So let's all plan to back that revival and be here for both nights of that service. We also have, uh, from the four participating churches, some of those pastors or leadership will be speaking. Okay, we don't know all the details yet and how it's going to lay out, but there are several church is going to introduce themselves our new church over here wants to introduce themselves so uh, just come and bathe that in prayer start praying for that that the Lord would uh, give us an uplifting time and uh, the, we would uh, catch a new fire a new glimpse of fire for uh, for our service here in town okay I believe that's all the announcements
So we'll turn to our uh, last song, 505. 505. We've stayed right close to the 500. 505. Glorious freedom.
right, we have friends that were uh, in a motorcycle accident, uh, Nikki and Mike. And uh, we also have uh, a very good friend that's right over here on Reed Road. Uh, we seen her on Monday night at the concert series. And when she got home, they, they raised cattle on there and they raised bulls for bucking, uh, you know, for this rodeo style thing. Well, those bulls were about to get out. She stood in front of the gate and they trampled her and the gate. Oh. Uh, she has an eye that she may lose. She oh. has two or three places on her neck that they're not sure how they're going to treat. Uh, both ankles are, are in bad shape. So uh, let's remember Jane this morning, especially. Jane has uh, serious injuries. So our friend Jerry that we asked for prayer for is, uh, we seen him yesterday, they replaced his pacemaker, adjusted his meds, and he's about ready to get out of the hospital and be home down by Joyce and George there. They'll, he'll probably throw eggs at their house or something just for fun. <laughs> he's feeling good, so. All right, uh, this morning in, in our Sunday school class, we said Judy wasn't here this morning, and uh, she's been suffered, uh, had some little irritations this morning, and so let's remember Judy. Rhonda has unspoken, and I'm sure there's other unspokens by uplifted hand. Yes, many unspokens. Uh, <coughs> Debbie brought us <coughs> a niece that is going to marry a gentleman named John. Well, John has very high blood pressure and was taken to the hospital, I believe. And so I'm not sure if they kept him or not, but John needs our prayers to get that blood pressure under control. And uh, again, I'll mention our tent revival. We need to bathe that in prayer. Now, if there's someone else that needs to be on this list. I don't have something for the list, but could I have a praise? You can have a praise. We love them. <laughs> um, the ladies, we toured uh, Janet's garden, which was absolutely beautiful. And then they came to my house. And one of the little areas I have has been de designated to just children. And everything, in it, which is not huge, huge, but it's the children's little garden. And I have been looking for a sign that says, Jesus loves the little children. Mm -hmm. And I did not find that. But yesterday, a tall, handsome young man brought me, it says, Jesus loves the little children. And he said that someone wanted him to make that for my garden. And so my garden says, Jesus loves the little children. Wow. Wow. That's great. Okay. That's praise right there. That uh, She's been looking for uh, a sign, and the Lord gave her a sign. <laughs> Let's put it that way. Anyone else need to be on this list this morning? All right. Let's turn our, our prayer song to uh, number 526. Let the beauty of Jesus will be seen in me. 526. <coughs>
And uh, when the sun shines outside, it shines in here too. And, and especially when the Lord's presence is here, it shines on us, doesn't it? Brother Bruce. Pastor, I, I'd like to say I really appreciate your picking these holiness songs or hymns out Amen. because we don't, and I know that it sounds like I, if I was the leader up there, I'd feel like nobody was with me. But I, I can't carry a tune, but I can read the words. Amen. And the hymns in the, these holiness songs are very powerful. Amen. And if you haven't if you haven't prayed for the second work of grace, you should. Amen. And we all should. Amen. 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 Well, since you mentioned that, we get done with this series, we're gonna we're gonna do that. Um, when we're talking about the second work of grace, we're talking about remember when we used to hear somebody stand up and they would say, I'm I'm saved and sanctified. Amen. Being wholly set apart for God's work. Yes. And we'll talk about that too. The Lord uh, urges us to do that now and then. And, you know, there's God has so much more for us. He really does. And we need to be set apart for His work. Well, let's go to prayer this morning. And I'll tell you what, I'll, I'll be praying from here, but if you guys think of something that you want to pray for with our heads bowed and everything, you're always welcome to do that. You're also welcome to come up around the front and pray, especially for someone. Uh, so we welcome that too. Our altar's never closed. You don't see a fence around it. This church will always have an altar that we can pray for. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you this morning for the great day that you've given us. A wonderful day to come and and to worship you uh, on this Sunday morning as we, uh, a day of rest, but Lord, it's also, as we know, a time when we come together uh, as children of God to worship you, and we sure want to do that today in all that we do, and through the songs and through our prayers, Lord, we guide them that, Lord, that, that, that they may be a worship to you. And then, Lord, as we listen to your message today that you direct in our direction, we ask that you would touch our hearts this morning in a special way, both in this service and our evening service. We pray for everything that goes on in this church and that, that we would be able to listen. Lord, take time to listen fast and pray as we are doing this morning. We pray for Roger and Judy. Judy has a, a, a little pain, Lord, in her chest, Lord. We pray for her and Maybe she'll need to go to the doctor. We pray, Lord, that, that she feels better this afternoon and won't have to go. And we just uh, ask that you would undertake and uh, perform a miracle of healing there. We pray for Rhonda and the unspoken request that she mentioned in our Sunday school class today. And for Jimmy that has MS and uh, Jimmy and Cindy's son here. Uh, and he's going to get an infusion. We pray that that will only do good things, Lord, and uh, that it will bring help to him. We also pray for John that has high blood pressure. We uh, ask for prayer for him today. And then, Lord, we always pray for our Sunday school, uh, Sunday school attendance, Lord, that we can build on it. Lord, we, we know that the young people need to learn of the Lord, and so that's what Sunday school is about, all of us learning more from each other and from you in our in our church service early. We pray for our church service. We pray for our Sunday evening services uh, together and all the other churches in town, as we have said that we would, uh, for each other and the leaders. And then, Lord, we think of our revival that we're trying to schedule here for, uh, for September. And we just pray that it will be a great time in the Lord and that it will become at least an annual event that we can have, Lord, a time of uh, just, uh, Lord, just being infused by you uh, in our hearts, Lord, and, and uh, just an uplift to all of us, the saints of the church and those in the community, those that don't know Jesus at all. And may it be a time that we can uh, just draw closer to you as we have our, our revival. First time in a long time, Lord, and may it, it be uh, well worth the while. We pray for the Russell family this morning and all the needs that they have. We pray that you be with Mary this morning. Give them all an uplift of encouragement. We pray for Linda and Fred, of course, this morning, and for Eldon and Esther. 
We pray for Greg as well that has a COPD problems. We pray just to, to touch his heart this morning. We pray for Bob that just had the back surgery. And Lord, we pray for healing there. We pray for the, the for Nikki and Mike as well and for Jane that's had an injury. And Jerry, give you a praise that he's getting better. And so, Lord, we pray for these needs. And then we thank Joyce for sharing with us a, a praise about a sign in her garden there, Lord. And we just thank you for the beauty of, of the gardens that we have. And we, it makes us think of, of the gardens that you created, all of them, Lord, really, and designed all of them, the beauty that is in them. Thank you, Lord, for, the, for your greatness and your wonderful salvation plan for us and that you've invited all of us to accept uh, that plan of salvation and, and build a relationship with you. We thank you for your presence today. We thank you for each one that is here with us this morning to worship. We thank you for the, the music and the instruments and all the singing today and the praises. Lord, we just want to say that we love you and we want to worship you in a special way today. Touch our hearts in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. Well, thank you all for coming this morning. And uh, are all of you doing pretty well? Well, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking that the weatherman says that we're supposed to have some neat weather like this most of this week. So let's get out and take advantage of it before we start seeing leaves turning on the trees. <laughs> and we got a few weeks there. Hey, I'm going to turn to Proverbs in my Bible. And, you know, Proverbs and Psalms, those areas right there, uh, the, uh, the Proverbs are a, a great thing to read and study. So let's turn to Proverbs 6, Proverbs 6, verse 32. And then Dan told you that today that we're going to be preaching on the fourth deadly sin. And we call them deadly sins because some sins are rather trivial, but uh, these sins that we've been talking about in this series, they can complicate your life, they can change your life, they are serious, and they are deadly sins, aren't they? And so let's not let the devil deceive us into falling into these sins. And if we have before, or we're in something right now, or being tempted to fall into them, let's make sure that the Lord is in our heart, and that we build our relationships strong enough to overcome, with the Lord's help, we can overcome Satan and his uh, dece deceivingness, I guess you would call it. So looking at chapter 6, verse 32 especially, it says, But the man who commits adultery, he's an utter fool. And if we have different, uh, you might have a different Bible that says it a different way, but none of them are good. We're, we're just kind of foolish. For he destroys himself. And then verse 33 says, He will be wounded and disgraced. His shame will never be erased. Well, the problem with this sin right here is that it affects so many people. And we're selfish enough to say, well, if I decide I'm going to do something like that, it's all about me. It's just me. Let me do what I want to do. The, you, you, that, that post person who would say that is a fool because this sin, especially this one, uh, affects so many other people, our families and a whole bunch. The fourth deadly sin was labeled impurity. Uh, by the ancient fathers, and we know it better by maybe the word lust. It is the category of sin that deals with the immorality of sexual sins. Lust, premarital, extramarital sex, prostitution, pornography, homosexuality, pedophilia, incest, and rape are all sins that may be classified as impurity, and I'm sure that uh, we hear so much of this on the news every day. We see so much of it. It's in our face. It's on billboards. It's everywhere. The devil presents it to us in all different kinds of ways. And I know that it's, it's hard to stay away from it, isn't it? And so this is particularly one that if we fall into it and we notice it or we're being tempted by it, especially from the tube, 
uh, these type of things get presented on there all the time. If you, I'll tell you what, if you have to turn TV off or walk away from it, that's what we should do. That's right. That's absolutely what we should do. And I would say, let's don't try to sit there and play with it and say, oh yeah, well I can handle this, I'll be all right. Because before you know it, you're not all right. That's right. So my... Uh, Try to stay away from any of these words. I'm sure that every one of them is familiar to you in some way. First of all, let's look at lust demonstrates a lack of maturity. Our scripture text for today makes this point. A man who commits adultery has no sense. That's what it says, no sense, and he's an utter fool. A lack of judgment indicates a lack of maturity. The world declares otherwise, and unfortunately, even some Christians have been fooled. The world calls some, some movies, and this is, you might snicker at this, but the world calls some movies, adult movies, or their rated movies, uh, some for mature audiences only. Really? The Christians should have rightly ask, if this is maturity, if that's what you have to be, if you have to be mature, then what then what would immaturity be? Some of the movies are rated for those who are mature, huh? Well, I think it's just about the opposite. Right. Lust is built on the world of fantasy and not reality. Lust dreams of activities that either are impossible or require the misuse and disregard of another's personal rights. It is selfishness in its lowest form, isn't it? To appreciate an attractive person, it's perfectly natural that that happens. The Lord created us that way, but real maturity does not let such appreciation, here's the catch, don't let it become an obsession in any way. That is the essential difference. Lust is coveting, uncontrolled craving, unleashed passion. Man should not behave like an animal. Sometimes I think we're worse than animals. Mm -hmm. For he is more than an animal. He is a creature. Don't forget that we are made in the image of God mm -hmm. and should act as such. And so we shouldn't be getting caught up in this stuff. And I know that you know, even the Bible, if you go to the Bible scripture and you see what it used to say to those people of Sodom and Gomorrah, it used to talk about kind of the same things, but even more so these days. They didn't have movies and televisions and everything like that that we got. And we got, we've got these phones that we can have all that stuff right on it, just pull our phone out, and there it is. You don't have to look, go to the drugstore and look in behind the counter anymore. It's way too available is what it is, and it's available to anybody. Lust demonstrates a lack of good judgment. Our scripture text makes a second point about sexual depravity. It states clearly that adulterers lack judgment. Adultery Fornication, incest, homosexuality, rape, and all other sexual sins demonstrate a lack of wisdom. It is readily apparent that such actions do not take into consideration the consequences, obviously. On the other hand, if one does know the consequences and of that activity and still proceeds, then he or she is indeed lacking in good judgment. I always thought, you know, I wouldn't want to have somebody do that to me. And women and men are both in the same boat when it comes to getting caught up in these things. Um, I have some stories to share with you this morning. And I, I can remember a family that worked with me. And they began to get kind of where they didn't like each other, I guess we'll put it that way, and the, 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 the tragedy of this is the children. Yes. They had three children that were ages, I think, 11, 9, and 5. Very impressionable kids. And their mother decided that she was going to leave 
And so she had her boyfriend stop by the house and pick her up, and she just walked out the driveway with her family following her, and her husband observed that, that as she went walking out there, the children were standing there vomiting in the driveway because they were that sick and upset about their mom leaving for good, and she never came back. Mm. Can you imagine? I cannot even imagine doing something like that with your kids standing there doing that. But that's how we are as a society, and the, the devil has overwhelmed somehow uh, these feelings and these needs to do these things. It is readily apparent that such actions do not take into consideration these consequences of the children. And on the other hand, if one does know that uh, and still proceeds, where are the morals? Where is the, where is the heart? Where is the feelings? Sincerity and responsibility are two qualities of good judgment. People who practice free love hide under the guise of enlightened intellectualism. They actually demonstrate a childish emotional level. Babies demonstrate almost total selfishness and self-centeredness. Do you remember when you were a kid? Do you remember when you were a baby? You don't. <laughs> What's wrong? You got bad memories? Now, usually, I was talking to somebody this week and they said, you know, I can remember back when I was two or three. I got, and the funny thing is, I got maybe uh, a, a one or two flashes in my mind about that. Isn't it strange that I can remember that, but I can't remember things that are happening right now? Like, who am I talking to, by the way? <laughs> or something like that. So it is, it is kind of funny. There are things that stick in our mind. Uh, it's necessary for the child's development, and hardly anyone expects them to act otherwise. Sometimes, uh, you know, the, the children will throw tantrums. Now, Dan, you still throwing tantrums? Pretty much so. Pretty much so. <laughs> to uh, express our feelings of frustration, sometimes we still, even as adults, throw tantrums. And the only way to end such behavior is to mold our world around their needs and desires. Lustful people behave like babies, actually. They resent any restrictions on their behavior and lack the judgment to be able to understand that they cannot always have what they want and when they want it. We as adults cannot do that either. And so hopefully we learn that. You know, lust does something else. It produces self-destruction. Our scripture text says that anyone who commits adultery has no sense. Whoever does so destroys himself. That's from Proverbs 6.32. And there are so many ways this verse proves true. Ministers, doctors, lawyers, psychologists, and social service personnel regularly see evidence of, of this very thing. Sexual sins cause grief, destruction of trust, guilt, divorce, anger, frustration, jealousy, deceit, murder, physical injury, and wrecked futures. Right. Loss of friendships and jobs. I think that list is endless, really. The complications of it are endless. Many believe they should be allowed to live their lives as they choose. Perhaps if one lived in a vacuum, such logic would make more sense. But because no man is an island, such logic is absurd. When are we going to learn that it doesn't just affect us, that it affects a lot more than us? And there's a lot more things than, than just this sin right here that affects other people. We should learn that much earlier in our life. One of the professionals listed above can tell how adultery, incest, and homosexuality, and the whole list of these sins has destroyed the lives of others. I'm sure that we all have and know those kind of stories. If you think you can violate the laws of God to your own selfish desires with impunity, guess what? We're wrong. God has created his laws, his rules in the Bible for a reason. 
And when we break them and decide to do otherwise, and the devil's constantly tempting us to do that, we need to not be deceived because God cannot be mocked. That's right. And when we break his laws, if we think sometimes we go, we do something against God's word, and we said, hmm, we look around, well, something <laughs> happened, nothing happened so far, and now I've gone a week and a whole month, and nothing's happened yet. I don't see where that was a problem. I guess it must be I'm okay. God's going to come and he'll set it straight one way or another. Mm -hmm. We don't necessarily know the timing. It might be something that happens to one of our children that happens because of what we did. You see, remember the old saying, the seeds that we sow, we shall also reap. From the flesh will reap destruction. Whoever sows to please the Spirit from the Spirit will reap eternal life. Galatians 7 and 8. Let's be careful what we sow in this lifetime. Every time that we come away from the, the laws that our God has set up, every time that we do that, we're taking a risk, aren't we? Not only of our own soul, but of carrying on people's lives. We need to be careful. Let us see our sexual appetite as a good gift from God to be used wisely for the enhancement of marriage by viewing our sexuality in a Christian manner. We will honor God, demonstrate maturity, and contribute to a dependable and responsible society. Failing to harness our sexuality will cause our culture to disintegrate. I think we don't have to look very far, do we? to see what's going on, and we know what's going on in this country and in this world. In America, I'm afraid, is the leader. Do you realize that other countries copy us? They listen to some of our, our music and we to them and all that kind of stuff, and before you know it, some of the things that we're wearing over here show up in other countries around the world. You wonder, well, how'd that happen? We're, you know, we're, we're a lot more worldwide now with our actions makes it even more important for us as Christians to do what God tells us to do. If you are already a Christian and having difficulty with lust, then we need to turn back to Christ, don't we? Yes. We need to turn to Christ and say, you need to help me with this. And like I said, if you face something, I, I, I'll tell you what, you, you get up in the morning and you'll start facing it right away as soon as you turn anything on. It's out there in the world, the news, it doesn't matter what it is, it comes right over that, comes into your phone. It is so in our face these days. And it's not just this one. There are lots of sins out there that are legally advertised, unfortunately, the way they are. We've got billboards out there that are just crazy. We've got people talking on television and telling you to try this and try that. That's all the devil. Yes, sometimes does it, it sometimes it seems like he's ahead of us. It's great to know that greater is our God Amen. than the God that is in the world. Our Lord can help us. And yes, I'm included. When something pops up on TV, if I sit there and gawk at it, until it gets in my head, that's, that's my mistake, isn't it? I need to, to switch the channel, and I've been doing that. I've been trying to do that. Something comes on, I just say, you know what? I don't need to see that, and I'll turn it to something else. You say, well, that's kind of dumb, isn't it, Pastor? No, it isn't. No. If it, it says flee from it, that's what I'm doing. And so we need to do it. If we're already a Christian and we have difficulty, and I'm telling you, right now we will, because the devil's working hard at trying to do it. He's working harder than he ever has. That tells me that we're not too far from the rapture, from the Amen. Lord's return, because the Bible talks about that. In the last days, Satan will ramp up his efforts. Return to the basics of following Christ and his teachings for a rich and satisfying view of our needs. Well, let's uh, make sure that we're careful of what we look at and what we're influenced by. 
out there in the world because it's everywhere. Just because it's popular, just because that's what everybody else is doing, the devil says, ah, see, it's not so bad until you realize that yes, it, it does cut in and it does do it does do damage. As a family, we're supposed to keep ourselves for just that one special person in our life that God has given us and not be all over the place with it. So that is my message this morning. Guess what? Uh, tonight we're going to be talking about, this one you're going to kind of laugh at. This one here is delighting the soul in fatness. <laughs> I, I don't know. <laughs> we'll, see where the, we'll see where the Lord's going with that. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. No, it's not about fatness, but that's what it says. Delighting the soul in the fatness. Okay. All right, let's stand together. As we close today, think about this. Is there any area in my life or your life this morning? That's what I want you to think about. Is there any area in our lives that we're working on that we need to have the Lord's help with? Just like this sin right here. Father, we thank you this morning for telling us every now and then, just point blank, Lord, that there are sins out there and we need to watch out for it because we know that, God, you wrote those sins up, you, you came up with them, and you said that don't do this because this is going to happen. And there was a reason for it. So, Lord, we trust in you, and we know that we've got to watch out for this one especially that concerns everybody else and our family especially. So, Lord, we pray that you'll help us to be strong in the righteousness that we need to, to cover this sin. Ask forgiveness and turn away from it in the future and keep turning away no matter how many times the devil influences us. We just need to keep turning away. Flee from it. And eventually, the devil gets the idea. Lord, we praise you this morning for your advice, for your direction, for your road map for life. And we just love you for that. We ask that you would follow us this, this day and be with us in all that we do today. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.